Hi guys. So um, it's been a while and um, we're rebooting our garden and I thought I would do a video on you know the basics um, decisions that you need to make make before you actually start restart your garden um, some of you, um, you you haven't stopped gardening but in our case um, we kind of had to pause for a moment because of some construction that was going on in our yard um, so now that we're restarting I thought I'd take the opportunity to you know um, just share some knowledge so um, with regards to what what are you going to plant not right now there are so many different varieties available so many vegetables available so um for for me the first thing that i do is i think about my family what we like to eat what my kids like to eat um also to take in um take in into perspective the space that we have because we only live on one lot of land and so for us, we love tomatoes, we love um, bygone, we love sweet peppers, you know, beets, th things like that. Um, so for me, because I don't have a lot of space, um, I tend to stay away from, you know, things that produce one, one that one just one head, like cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower. In the beginning, I did try it because you know you wanted the experience you wanted to, to, to know what it is like to grow your own cabbage all, all of that but now that I have you know the experience of farm of gardening for a, a few months now a little while now um, I've come to realize that you know um, a, a head of cabbage a head of cauliflower does take up a lot of space and that one head is going to feed you one meal oh uh, uh, a, a, a tomato tree is going to give you several pounds of tomatoes. A uh, bygan tree is going to give you several pounds of, of bygan. And f for me, it just makes more sense um, economically to, to grow tomatoes and bygans and peppers and things that give me more. You know, um, I also do beets because. Uh, I use beets a lot and beets are quite expensive also beets only take up this much space you know per beet in your garden and you can stick it in at, at the edge of a bed you don't really need a whole bed of beets you know um, things like uh, radishes of uh, radishes take um, very very fast to, to produce you know you can also eat the leaves of the radishes um, things like pumpkin pumpkin um, would give you a lot of food you know and uh, a pumpkin vine will pick up uh, quite a, a fair bit of space but you can also you know prune it prune it in such a way that it does not pick up um, you know or, or have an area for it um, okros we love okros my little one is asking me where are we gonna plant okros again because she likes to eat them raw you know she likes to go and just pick every morning and eat them raw and I also wanted to talk about some varieties, some of my favorite varieties. So for okros, I find the burgundy okro is the most productive that I, I have grown. Um, you all can tell me you know, which ones you like. Um, I, I find like in six weeks, you will, you will start to get um, okro from it. I did not have that experience with the other okros that, that I grew. I, I had to wait quite a while for it to actually start producing. And with the burgundy okro, um, you have to pick it a little bit younger you can't really leave it to get too too big but you get more you get a lot more okra from one plant i also like the clemson spineless it's a bigger okra a fatter okra um, but it does take a little while to produce um, for the tomatoes um, yes i do plant uh, some of the local um, uh, hybrid types but i also do the heirlooms because if i'm putting all this effort you know into planting and, and want it to be organic I don't want to have to go in the market and see tomatoes for five dollars a pound or two dollars a pound you know when I am putting all this hard work into make to grow in my own tomatoes so I, I I prefer to grow things like the purple Cherokee that's a very a really nice a deep tasting dusky sweet tomato um, I actually eat it raw we, we don't cook it I like the yellow pear it's sweet as well um, things like the black cherry tomatoes those are my favorites the black cherry is quite sweet um, with regards to 
With regards to the um the bygone the black beauty bygone is what we found works you know people say that um the bygone it, they have a lot of trouble with it fruiting we found the black beauty it, 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 it does you don't get all that trouble with it fruiting and um and it's it's a smaller bygone yes but it um but it it doesn't have as many seeds inside of it you know and it produces so much right now we have one black beauty bygone tree and it has 10 10 on it 10 bygones so it produces a lot so for me I go for the varieties that produce heavily and um, once you continue to pick it will continue to produce so I just wanted to also do a small tutorial I'm going to plant some lettuce seeds and um, some spinach that I got from a friend Ellen and um, I just wanted to also do a small tutorial on planting seeds directly into the ground so I'm going to plant some lettuce and um, I just thought I'd show you all how I do it now this is just regular soil um, that we got topsoil and I add a, I'm adding some compost and you can see how dark the compost is. You can see the difference between the lighter colored topsoil and the compost. And this is compost that we made ourselves from um, chicken manure, um, grass, um, cut, cut with the picked up bags on the highway, and then we added green matter, which was a, pump, a big, huge pumpkin vine that we were getting rid of. And this took quite a few months, about four months, um, to break down into this really nice, soft uh, material. So all I'm going to do is uh, mix it into the topsoil. Um, it's important to add organic matter to um, your soil. Um, that will bring good bacteria into your soil. And good bacteria um, helps your plant. It helps, you, it helps your plants to fight um, you know, bad diseases, any things in your soil. It also helps to... Um, it also helps to your um, fruits and everything will grow better it, it helps to balance the pH in your soil so that you don't end up with you know um, too much nitrogen or any of that so I'm leaning more towards compost so whenever I'm planting something for the first time or you know even though it's a, a new Thing, a new variety. I always look at the back of the seed packet or I will look on the internet to see the, um, you know, uh, what's recommended. So you th this needs to be planted quarter inch deep, which is not very deep. So what I did was I wet the soil first because if I were to plant the seeds and then wet the soil, they would get displaced or, um, you know, lost and all of that. And um, because these seeds are very the seeds are very very tiny and um, it's very difficult to plant one one per you know hole they recommend 12 inches apart but I'm not going to 12 inches apart um, I'm going to just sprinkle them along like this I made a, a sort of a, um, a little drain in the soil and I'm going to sprinkle and and when they come up um, I'm going to thin them and I'll use the ones that I pull out and plant them somewhere else so you know I'm using here kind of like just to, to grow the seedlings and um, and it's super easy you're just sprinkling them like this and these seed packets have like you know a lot of seeds hundreds of, of seeds because they're so tiny and um, I'm using the, the, the tire because it's lettuce and lettuce is something that we you know we eat the leaves off so I prefer that it's a little bit off the ground um, you know and it's easier for me to um, to sort of care for as well you know um, and and all I do is I would take the soil now and, and, and sort of just push it over like this and that's it really um, now I wish I could plant in 100% compost and the soil would be very soft and fluffy and nice but you know it's just very difficult in Trinidad compost is so expensive and you, even when you do compost for yourself we just have you know uh, a little bit for us because 
it takes so long number one and then number two our space is not very big so I will show you all you know what becomes of this lettuce I'm just trying to move some of the bigger things out of the way and um, and that's it that's how you would plant seeds into the ground instead of seedlings <laughs>